With iPadOS 17, Apple has brought the Health app to the iPad. It gives users the ability to track their health, and the app has been optimized for the iPad's larger screen. The design is visually more appealing and brings newly designed revamped features. The display encourages you to interact with your health data through trends, highlights, and interactive charts. Let's dive into the new health app in iPadOS 17 and bring your health data to life on the iPad's larger display. Hi, I'm Ellen from Ellen's Tips for iOS.com. If you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. Once your iPad is updated to iPadOS 17, the Health app will be displayed on your home screen. Here's how to set it up. Open the Health app. You'll see the Welcome screen. Tap Continue. If you aren't seeing the welcome screen, it may be because you've already set up your health app on the iPhone and it's already syncing to your iPad. If not, you'll continue. Toggle on the sync to iPad switch to ensure your data is available on your iPhone and Apple Watch. Tap continue. Toggle on the trends to receive a notification about your new trend in your health data, tap continue, and now you continue adding your health details and set up your profile as needed. The health categories, records, summary, and health sharing option will be available in the left side panel. The health app intends to be your all-encompassing companion, allowing you to track your daily emotional states and moods and track your medications. Users can compile and view their health records from multiple institutions in one centralized, secure, private location. So to do this, you can kind of see over here in the upper right corner, I've connected uh, the Allegheny Health Network uh, to my health uh, app. And you can do that as well. You just need to come over to the left-hand side, scroll down to the bottom, and where it says add account, hit the plus sign, and there'll be a listing of everything that it's available there. You, your institution may not be listed and it wouldn't be available, but you can search for the institutions that are. And if yours is available, you can then connect your health network or your doctor to the health app. If you set up your medication list over on, on your iPhone, it should be available here. But if it's not, if you haven't set that up or you're only using an iPad and not an iPhone, you can come in and you'll see there's an option here to add your medications. I have a whole video on how to add medications and I'll put a link to that in the video description. Apple is continuing its focus on health and wellness with some new features. So in the mental health category, both the health app on the iPhone and iPad and the mindfulness app on the Apple Watch, if you have one, allow users to reflect on their current state of mind. You can scroll through multi-dimensional shapes that correspond with how you're feeling, everything from very pleasant to very unpleasant. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and clicked on mental well-being, and you can see that there's different categories here. And if I tap into, say, anxiety risk, you'll see that there's an anxiety risk questionnaire that I can take. And these are the type of surveys that you're given in a doctor's office. So you can go through and take the questionnaire. If I come back and I tap into state of mind, now I can go ahead and hit the get started and go through what my state of mind is on this particular day. And the health app will keep track of all of that for you. You can come into the sleep area. And so if you have a sleep uh, app set up, you can have the data transferred into this. There's so many options now. You can keep track of your exercise risk. 
or minutes, you can check depression risks and take the depression risk questionnaire. These are all updates that Apple has brought to the health app so that we can take care of our mental well-being. Another new feature in iPadOS 17 uh, deals with uh, vision and nearsightedness affects 30% of the population. And there are several ways to reduce the risk factors, including spending more time outside in daylight and increasing the distance at which something like a book or a device is viewed. So as you can see, there's an option here for time spent in, in daylight. So starting in Watch OS 10, you can measure your time spent in daylight with the ambient light sensor, and that information will then be displayed in the health app. There's also a new screen distance feature found on the iPhone and iPad, and it encourages users to move their device further away holding it closer than 12 inches for an extended period of time will trigger that. And it also provides tips for younger users to engage in healthy viewing habits and allows adults to reduce eye strain. So to get to that area, we need to come into the settings uh, app. So if I swipe out of the health app and I open up settings, and if I you know, tap on screen time, you'll see an option for screen distance to reduce eye strain. And you can toggle on that switch there. But again, I wish Apple had a way to bring this to all devices, but right now it's only working on devices that use Face ID. Uh, so that would be on your iPhone or uh, if you have a iPad Pro that uses Face ID, then this screen distance option will be available to you. Uh, it's there in the settings no matter what, but it's only available uh, for use with Face ID devices. As you can see, the addition of the health app on the iPad is a great way to see significant health information on a larger screen. The mental health and vision features are an excellent addition to a robust set of features across Apple devices. If you have any questions, post them in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.